my name is Fred Durhaw. Uh, I am running for Detroit City Council in District 7. Please share your Detroit background and relationship to Detroit. Your history of being a Detroiter. Uh, so obviously I was born in Detroit, uh, raised in Detroit, went to school in Detroit, uh, and have served in Detroit. Uh, born uh, on the west side of Detroit at Henry Ford Hospital. I uh, attended Detroit Public Schools. I uh, went on there uh, from there to attend Eastern Michigan University. And uh, shortly thereafter, got involved in uh, business, uh, worked uh, for the DMC uh, and many other companies around the city of Detroit. In 2014, I was elected uh, to serve as state representative in Michigan's fifth house district. Been involved in politics and government and public service, obviously, all my life. My family has a lifelong legacy as it relates to politics and public service. And so uh, here we are still fighting to serve the city of Detroit. Tell the story of what led you to run for office. So it was very interesting. Uh, you know, folks asked me, why did I decide to run for Detroit City Council? Uh, obviously, again, I served as a former state representative, uh, so I have a lot of governmental uh, and legislative experience. Uh, but I currently work for the Michigan State Housing Development Authority. Uh, and when a vacancy was occurring and there was a lot of uh, tumultuous times, obviously, as it relates to uh, District 7, uh, a lot of community leaders asked me uh, to run for Detroit City Council. I thought about it at first. I considered it. I, you know, I take public service very seriously. I don't think it's something that you just jump into or jump back into. Uh, and then I made my decision. Uh, I prayed on it, woke up the next day and pulled petitions. And now here we are uh, running for District 7. What is your understanding of the duties of the office you are running for? Well, Detroit City Council obviously is the legislative branch of city government. Uh, and one of the main duties uh, of the city uh, council, as described by the, uh, the charter, uh, is to balance our budget and ensure that city services uh, are available to our residents here. Uh, also to obviously introduce ordinances and make ordinances to be able to protect the rights of our citizens here in our city. So are you familiar with and what is your position on the Detroiters Bill of Rights? Uh, the Detroiter, Detroiters Bill of Rights obviously gives them the rights to have city services to be served, not be discriminated against. What is your position on water shutoffs and water affordability in the city of Detroit? I, I think water affordability obviously is one of our major issues here in the city of Detroit. I uh, actually have a comprehensive plan. Uh, obviously, you know that the Detroit Water Department has a plan right now where they're allowing folks to pay $25 a month. But I think we have to go beyond that. Uh, there are a lot of folks here in the city of Detroit that will never be able to pay and catch up on their water bill. So we have to create a water amnesty program for folks who, you know, water who, whose water bills are so high, they will not be able to pay it off. And so uh, I think we could be able to forgive some of that, uh, particularly as it relates to some of the funds that we have coming here through the city of Detroit, I'm sorry, through the uh, federal government, uh, close to $800 million. Uh, and we can work on establishing that program. Also, I would, you know, fight for uh, uh, increased uh, water or I'm sorry, an extension on water moratoriums uh, here in the city. How would you enhance Detroit's neighborhoods and which neighborhoods would be your priority? Any specific one? Well, I would give our district <laughs> a priority, District 7. Uh, I think that it is one of the most forgotten uh, districts here within the city of Detroit. Encompasses the west side, obviously borders a lot of the suburban areas. Uh, but some Detroiters, as I knock doors, say they feel forgotten. Uh, so I would prioritize our district. Uh, in regards to neighborhood stabilization, obviously, some of my plans are to address blight uh, demolition. We've got homes that have been on that list since 2013, uh, as well as the illegal dumping that takes place within our communities. We've got to get that under control and public safety. Uh, as I knock doors as well, I see folks speed up and down the street, 60, 70 miles an hour. Uh, down the street, and that has become a huge issue. And so, as I talk to residents, they want to see speed bumps and increase, and I'm sorry, an increased police presence uh, within the district uh, and our neighborhoods. And so, that's something I will fight for in regards to neighborhood stabilization. And what else is attached to that? Obviously, is bringing jobs here, uh, economic development, and the and the development of small businesses and entrepreneurship uh, within our district, creating you know uh, access for walkability, retail grocery stores that are accessible to our residents. What is your plan and position on abandoned properties like schools throughout the city of Detroit owned by the Land Bank Authority? So uh, for schools, for one, uh, I think we have some opportunities to do some great things. Uh, I think that we can build some partnerships 
uh, whether it be uh, with sports teams, whether it be with a lot of our business communities to get programs in those buildings. District 7 particularly does not have a recreation center. And some of those empty shells are still structurally sound. They could serve as, you know, uh, uh, houses or housing per se uh, for a lot of our youth. Uh, they can serve as facilities for our youth is what I meant to say. So we can open up those facilities, allow our youth to come in and get programs to get tutoring, get after school resources, wraparound services uh, that they need. Uh, and we can fill those empty buildings as far as the vacancies that relate uh, in, in our neighborhoods. And some of them are, are land bank owned properties. Uh, I have an extensive program that I'm planning so we can get folks into these homes. Uh, first, I'd like to give preference to Detroiters who are legacy, who have been here over 10 years. Uh, and they will be able to get first bidding uh, for some of these land bank properties. Uh, and then particularly if they have been affected by a $600 million over assessment here uh, within our city, uh, they will definitely be able to get first preference on those properties. Now, if they don't have the ability to be able to bid because, you know, resources are low and, you know, they were victims of foreclosure, we can create a low interest low loan program that could be paid over 20 years. And two things will happen with this program. One, folks will be able to get into a home, a land bank owned property. And two, the funding from that and them paying off the loan goes into a pot of money that will actually go back to them and kind of give them restitution for the over assessment that the city of Detroit had close to $600 million. And so that will help the city and its economy. It'll help the land bank program and it'll help those who need housing. What's your position on the repayment of residents who have been over assessed and overpaid property taxes? Yeah, that's that, that's my program. Man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when we get there, that's something we're going to work on day one. Again, you know, if I can add, I just think it's just, you know, it's unconscionable uh, that folks were over assessed here in our state. Uh, another aspect is that we have to reassess these homes. Uh, we've got to look at what's on the books, reassess these homes and assure one that this never happens again. But we've got to resolve we've got to resolve this issue. And it's kind of be some, something similar like I worked on when I was in the legislature in regards to a lot of the folks who were wrongly accused for fraud for unemployment. Uh, we created a fund and I was on the budget while we did that. Uh, and I want to create the same type of fund for our citizens. As you know, it can be funded again from these the purchase of these land bank properties. And we keep a circle of funds and resources and revenue. Uh, just flowing uh, and it solves many issues. What's your definition of police reform? Do you feel it's needed in Detroit? If so, in what ways? What is your position on facial recognition technology? So uh, my definition of police reform uh, looks like a couple of things. Uh, first, it looks like uh, creating pro uh, programs that basically promote implicit bias training. Uh, sensitivity training and mental health assessments. Uh, I think that's going to be instrumental, uh, not only for our officers, but our citizens here within the city as we talk about improving police and community relations, for one. Uh, the second thing is developing, and, and the city already has this, but actually providing more revenue for a mental health program. Because a lot of our folks who are offenders that and we come in contact with, or they come in contact with law enforcement, some of them have mental health issues that have not been addressed. So, Therefore, if we had a trained professional that goes along with our officers to kind of create some type of intervention, uh, maybe we can deal with a lot of the behavior issues that already exist without resorting to incarcerating them and filling our Wayne County jails, which are already overcrowded. Second of all, uh, I think when we talk about uh, policing, we've got to look at getting more officers on the street. At one time, Detroit had over 4,000 officers. We kind of low right now. We have a lot of folks that come here that get this world class training and they leave because the pay is so low. So we also have to increase pay to get more officers so we can have a better police presence here uh, within our city. And your other question was facial recognition. Facial recognition. Uh, I, you know, that's kind of uh, twofold. I mean, it's, it's popular in some areas and it's unpopular in some areas. Some folks are very proud of the green light project and think that it has, you know, added to our city and made folks feel very safe in some of the areas that are high crime. Uh, and so that's kind of facial recognition technology or surveillance, if you will. Uh, but I think that it will be that's something that will be up to the voters uh, as it relates you know, to them. I think if it's going to be done, though, uh, it has to be done in a responsible way and it should not have any bias, particularly in a city where our largest demographic uh, is African-Americans and minorities. What do you see as the future of Detroit? I see the future of Detroit as a, a city that's vibrant. Uh, but not just downtown. 
uh, our neighborhoods. Uh, that's our strength here in Detroit. If you visited so many uh, other metropolitan cities across the country, you'll understand uh, Detroit is unique in that way. Uh, we have strong neighborhoods. We have strong homes. Uh, however, they've deteriorated over the years uh, based on the lack of resources that have been put into them. Uh, unemployment, obviously, crime, uh, education. Uh, and so we've got to focus on that. Uh, I see the future of Detroit as a place where our citizens who have stuck here for over the, you know, the many, many years can say they're proud to live uh, again uh, and that they understand they'll be safe in their communities. They'll have access to jobs, access to retail, access to downtown if they want to, but just great educational systems as well for their children where everyone can just raise a family. So I see the future of Detroit growing and it's growing fast, but most importantly, it must be inclusive of everyone. And we've got to ensure that that is going to happen here within our city as we grow and rebuild our districts, uh, whether that be block by block uh, or community by community. Why should Detroiters vote for you? Well, because I'm a hard worker. Uh, you know, we're literally just coming off the doors right now uh, talking to residents. Uh, we threw the suit on just to come do this great interview with uh, you guys today. And we're, we're, you know, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, but Detroiters should vote for me because I'm experienced. Uh, I have served four years in the Michigan legislature. Two of those years, I served as the assistant Democratic leader of the House of Representatives. And two years, I sat uh, over the state budget uh, as the minority vice chair of House Appropriations, a $64 billion budget at that time. Uh, so I know how to deliver resources back to the city. I've delivered close to $800 million for police, fire, EMS, city services, $100,000 for our local community groups so they can do police uh, you know, I'm sorry, community uh, patrols as well as cleanups help save the Dexter Elmhurst Community Center by getting them two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars to keep the doors open. Uh, Detroit Pal, Flip the Script, DAPSEP, all these youth programs I helped save along, you know, the years uh, have been instrumental uh, in what we have delivered. Uh, and so I am looking to do that down at Detroit City Council. I am the most experienced candidate in this race. No one can say they have served at our state capital or delivered the resources that I have. And we are in a vital time here in the city of Detroit. Uh, we have obviously a vacancy in this seat. Some folks have been fit, you know, feeling forgotten over the years. And we've got to restore not only the faith, but we've got to restore a work ethic that is representative of what the citizens want. Not just listen, but put those words into actions. And that's what they'll get out of me uh, at the Detroit City Council.